Hello, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter, back again with another video on the Scan and Cut. This time around, I would like to share with you how I created these stitchable card fronts using the piercing tool. So, let's dig in. Begin by opening the software, and just a reminder, this is the installed version of Canvas Workspace. Then, clear down any of the pop-up windows, including News or Pattern Collections. Maximise the workspace and zoom in to the work mat. Just before I continue with this demonstration, I'd like to remind you that over on Udemy.com I have a full Cut, Draw and Scan with Confidence course covering everything you need to know about the Scan and Cut, so please do check that out. Okay, let's crack on with this demonstration showing you how to create stitched card fronts using the piercing tool. I'm going to set everything up in Canvas Workspace and then we'll transfer it to the machine and punch and cut it out. So I'm going to start with a basic square. I'd like to change it, but I find that if I stretch a design like this, then um, sometimes the, the corners, when cut, can be a bit rounded. So I'm going to try a different method for this video and see how we go. The first thing that I need to do is turn on my ruler, the snap to grid, and change the grid spacing to five millimeters. Then I'm just gonna push that square till it gets to the zero X, Y point. So that's top left to you and me. And I can check that it is in the edit tab. Then I'm gonna click again on the square to enter the node editing mode. I'm gonna select the bottom two nodes drag them down to about 14 and a half centimeters. Then select the two on the right and just drag those over one square, so to about 10 and a half. That should give me a 105 by 145 rectangle, which it did. Perfect. Okay, so I'll just bring that back into the work mat so that it doesn't go outside of the cutting area and then I will turn off the ruler, turn off the snap to grid. Not essential to do that, but I find it helps with the next stages so that I don't get all snagged up and visually overloaded. Next thing that I'm going to do is drag on a circle. Just a nice simple circle. Resize that. Maybe a bit bigger. Next thing that I'm going to do is create an offset. So I'm in the edit tab, offset, five millimeters inwards bevel and delete the original shape. And that's just basically reducing the size of that rectangle to what would be considered a matte and layer for an A6 card. Could have originally set that up by working out the measurements, but math's not my strong point. So, next thing is to drag on a circle, resize it, and then we will apply the piercing function. So you can do this either from the context menu at the top or from the context drop down on the layers panel. So when I select pierce, you can see that that's now changed to a series of dots, which will be punched through the card. In the properties tab, I can change the spacing between those dots. And for this kind of basic shape, I prefer a spacing of, a spacing of about five millimeters. So you can see there. I'll just copy and paste this card front now. Then I'll load up, uh, let's say, a heart. Resize that. Oops. Maybe a bit smaller. There we go. Same again. Turn on the piercing tool change the spacing and there we go 
let me just quickly align those using the alignment tools in the edit tab I'll bring that one down a bit there okay another one this time I'm going to try some text so grab the text tool type out my word and then apply the piercing tool function now that's quite defined but it is very close together they're only one millimeter apart so if I chose the five millimeters that I've been using so far I've lost a lot of definition in the um, letters and I'm not sure I could even work out where to go when I'm stitching this out so let's see what happens when I drop it down to four not quite three not, mm, okay so I can work out the E how about two and a half okay that works better I can see the H I can see the E and the central hole in the E um, Does that work? Yes, it does. That goes there and that goes there. L, L, O. Okay, yep, we can work with that. Uh, zoom to mat. I'm going to rotate it. And I will resize it to be... to take up quite a bit of space on the front of that card. I will align it as before. And then let's try one more. So for this one, I'm going to go into the Layers tab and lock that rectangle in place. And that's because I want to work on top of it. So I am going to grab a floral shape, like a floral star, resize that to about, let's say, there. I'll rotate it a bit as well. Then I'm going to grab my path tool and I will make a single click to start and then click and drag to get myself a curved line. And a double click to set that in place. Uh, back to the standard shapes to find myself something leafy. How about this one? stem. Do I need another one? Copy paste. Let's flip that. Do we want that? Do we not? I might just go with the single. Okay, when I've got those three, I can select them all and apply the piercing tool all at once. And I can change the spacing. So let's try the start one of five. That does not work for me. Let's try four. Okay, that works for the flower. Um, yeah, you know what, let's keep that for all of them. Control G to group. And then in my Layers tab, unlock the rectangle so that I can use my alignment tools by selecting both of those. And there we go. In less than 10 minutes, four different stitchable card fronts have been created. So to get those over to my Scanner Cut machine, I can either transfer via a USB using Export FCM file or I can transfer via my Wi-Fi connection using the other option. Next up, it's time to punch those out.
Okay, so over at the machine, I load up the piercing tool and also a sheet of cardstock onto the piercing mat. The piercing tool goes in the blade carriage and I'll retrieve my design from the Wi-Fi from the cloud and load my piercing mat. Next from the output menu I choose pierce and the machine will then pierce the cardstock. The beauty of this particular um, piercing mat though is that I can then go straight on to cut on it. I don't need to change mats. So I take my piercing tool out put my black auto blade in and then choose cut from the output menu. And again, the machine will then go on to cut. What it does do, however, to help things stay in position is it leaves tiny little tabs connecting the shapes to the um, cardstock. So once you've removed the cardstock from the mat, you will need to just pop those out and perhaps even sand them down um, because there will be little pips on the edge of the shape. It's then up to you how you go about stitching that out. Here are a few examples of the ones that I did with this um, particular tutorial. Some are just straightforward backstitch and some are a bit more freestyle. So listen, have fun, play around and enjoy this technique.